Welcome to the Altium series on high-speed design. Uh, my name is Lee Ritchie with Speeding Edge, and I'm going to answer one of the questions that is asked by de new designers. And the question today is, is length matching required in high-speed buses? Uh, might want to start with what a bus is. Uh, uh, in, in the case of logic design, a bus is a set of data or address signals that go together to transmit either data or an address for something such as storing data in memory. Um, typical buses are VME, PCI, uh, the CPU da data lines where data goes through a CPU, uh, memory data and memory addresses. Those are all buses that we are going to talk about here in this session. Uh, so first of all, let's, let's talk about the width of buses. Uh, there are quite a few varieties. Here are some typical ones. Uh, the original PC uh, microprocessor had an 8-bit wide bus for both data and address. Uh, when we got more capability, they uh, went to 16 bits wide and then 32. And the current PCs are mostly 64 bits wide. Why do we want to make the bus wider? Well, we can do more work in a given clock cycle when we do that. That's the whole motivation for doing this. So there's a diagram that gives you some idea of what we're talking about. We have two logic blocks, A and B. We want to take a, a data word from block A and lock it into block B to do some operation. So we're going to change the data words uh, to whatever the new logic state is and send that over to the logic block. And then once they settle, we'll clock those into some latches normally or into memory. And uh, so we want to make sure that uh, the data is all the bits are good when the clock takes place. So that's what the length matching is going to be about. We're going to match the length of all the bits to each other and then the clock to the, uh, the, the whatever the length of the data bits are. When you see a new data word sent on a bus, uh, it gets clocked into a register or into memory. Uh, we want to we want to delay the clock so that uh, the data bits have time to settle to uh, their final state before we uh, uh, do that clocking. Uh, it, I think it follows the the faster the uh, the data becomes, the more accurate we have to do the clocking, and the more carefully we have to match the length of the data lines to the clock. Uh, the example I have here is a, a data uh, bus that's going at a gigabit per second. The length of a of a data period is one nanosecond. And so what we want to do is center the clock in the middle of that bit period. That would say that we want to delay the clock by 500 picoseconds. Well, what does that mean in time and distance? Well, I've got a nanosecond right here. This is six inches or 15 centimeters. And so if I were, if I were wanting to delay the clock uh, with respect to the data, it would be half of that, which is 500 picoseconds or three inches. So that's our first uh, look at how accurate the links have to be. It follows, I think, that uh, w we, we want to make sure that the bit lines are lined up as well so that we clock them in the middle. So exactly how, how tightly you have to do the length matching, uh, again, depends on what the bit period is. We want to convert time to distance to figure out uh, uh, what uh, accuracy we need. Uh, six inches per nanosecond, again, this is what I have in my hand here, is the rate of the speed in, uh, in printed circuit boards. example I have here of a giga, gigabit per second has a bit period of 1,000 picoseconds. And if I stagger the clock by half of a bit period, that's 500 picoseconds or three inches. Now, one can take these brief examples I have here and and convert whatever the data rate is of a particular bus and w see how hard we have to work to match length. And often the uh, manufacturer in the data sheet will tell you how tightly the length has to match. Again, once they, you know how many picoseconds you have to work with, you can use this little ruler I have here to figure out what the dimensions have to be. Um, so. Again, information in computers is, is moved around inside the processors and other places on buses, and that data then gets clocked. Make sure that we clock the data in when it's all good. We have to A, make sure that all the data lines arrive at the same time and that the clock is lined up with respect to those data changes. Um, so that, that's, uh, that's fundamentally what length matching is all about. We, we want to make sure that we 
our clocking when data is good. Um, again, how tightly, how hard you have to work depends on how fast the data changes. Once I know how tightly I have to time things with respect to picoseconds, I can then convert to uh, dimensions and put that in the layout rules. And what my experience is is this: if I see a uh, a length matching spec that says 100 picoseconds or some round number like that, I'm sure that's made up, uh, and I won't trust it. I'll do my own math to figure out what the length matching has to be. And my experience is is that the length matching requirements imposed on most buses are, are unnecessarily strict. We work too hard matching lengths uh, because uh, that the math I was just talking about hasn't been done. Uh, so that's basically what length matching is all about. And yeah, we need to do that wherever there's a bus. Uh, so this is, again, uh, Lee Ritchie, and uh, I hope this video uh, was of some use. If it was, share it with your colleagues. Uh, if you have other topics you think we might uh, explore, uh, don't hesitate to uh, pass those on to Altium, and we'll see what we can do uh, to, to deal with those. Thanks for watching. <music>